Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekly meal prep slash batch cooking video. So in this video, I do have brand new recipes that I am so excited to share with you guys. And then one of these recipes is holiday friendly. I'm really trying to incorporate holiday friendly recipes, whether it be in my meal prep or an extra video a week. But let's get in the kitchen and let's get to cooking and let's see these delicious meals. First off, we are going to start with breakfast. Like always, I just scrambled six eggs and that was around a tablespoon of grass fed butter. And I went ahead and added some salt. That is that Redmond salt as well as some black pepper. I didn't need to make too much this week because Oscar only worked three days this week. He had a couple of days off during the week. But I did go ahead and add some cheese to that and then just mix that into the scrambled eggs. And I did that mostly so that way the eggs would kind of stick together a little bit better because I am going to wrap them in sliced ham. That is black forest ham that I got at Sam's Club and I just basically rolled it up. That was it. Super simple, easy peasy. And... That is the macros for that ham if you guys are interested. It's really, really good. It's a couple of pounds in that container and the price at Sam's Club is on point. But that is what they looked like when I was done and it's something easy that Oscar can just throw a couple on his plate every morning while he's at work and an easy protein powered breakfast. Next up, that is two and a half pounds of ground beef that I got at Sam's Club as well. And that is the 85%, I believe, ground beef. I'm just going to add in all those seasonings, pepper, oregano, cayenne, paprika, chili powder, cumin, onion and garlic powder, and some salt. That is eight ounces of cream cheese that I'm going to mix into that meat mixture. And that literally was only about one fourth cup of salsa. I would have preferred more, but that is all I had. So got to work with what you got. And then again, I added in all those seasonings. All those seasonings is basically kind of like your typical taco seasonings. I don't measure. I uh, just kind of eyeball everything, but I can leave a taco seasoning that I like to use when I do mix it up ahead of time. I can leave that in the description box below. If I forget, leave a comment and I can do that. But this ends up being such a great like burrito mixture with the cream cheese and all those seasonings with the ground beef. You guys, if you haven't tried it, it's delicious. You could even make, turn this into like chimichangas, basically make a burrito out of it and fry it in some avocado oil, or you could put it in the air fryer. So good. Next up, we are just going to be making a general stir fry. So I'm going to take one pound of that ground chicken, and then that is some broccoli florets and some Brussels sprouts that I will be adding to that. I add all those vegetables. I know it looked like a lot, but you know what? It's a great way to get in your vegetables. That was probably one to two tablespoons of sesame seed oil. I went ahead and added the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts as well as that was probably a tablespoon of garlic. Let that saute for just a very short amount of time, just a couple of minutes. And then I went ahead and added the ground chicken and I'm just going to cook all that together using my handy dandy little meat masher. And if I smash some of the vegetables, it's really not that big of a deal. I added some of that Bragg's liquid aminos. And then I did just go ahead and add some of that ground ginger this was delicious that is all the seasonings you need because the liquid aminos have quite a bit of sodium so you don't need to add salt or anything but i just mixed that around put the lid on there let it cook that's how it came out it was so delicious if you're looking for a simple easy healthy delicious meal this is seriously it also if you're craving chinese this could do the trick Next up, I just wanted a simple, simple side dish to have with if we have steak or chicken or something like that during the week, something that's already made so I don't have to cook a ton. So I just took spaghetti squash because I've had this in my fridge and I wanted to use it up. So I just cleaned out all the middle, the seeds and all that good stuff. 
And then I do cut off the ends. So if you see the ends there, I literally just cut those off and then I scrape out the middle because I think it's easier to cut off the ends to slice it down the middle, in my opinion. But I just put it on manual for seven minutes and that literally does the trick. Put them upside down so they don't get so much condensation in the middle, but it literally just forks out and it's like spaghetti. I mean, it's awesome. This is pretty versatile. You could turn this into a main dish, like an Alfredo or spaghetti type dish, or you could eat it just as a side, just like I'm going to do. I added around a tablespoon of butter, lots of pepper. Y'all, I love pepper. You're probably like, girl, that was a lot of pepper. <laughs> yes, it was, but I love pepper. And then I did add some salt. Just going to mix all that together, get it all incorporated, and voila, again, that is an easy side dish. And even if you do that, you could still turn it into whatever dish you want later, a casserole or whatever. So versatile. Next up, I am going to be making some creamy Tuscan shrimp. Remember, if you don't like shrimp, it's not a big deal. Take out the shrimp and add in chicken or whatever your choice of protein is. But that is two tablespoons of grass-fed butter that I am just heating up in that pan. And once that's nice and hot, I do go ahead and add the garlic as well as the shrimp. And I just cook that up together for just a little bit. I don't completely cook the shrimp because I don't want to overcook the shrimp. Then I added a half a bag of spinach. I used frozen. You can use fresh. I just decided to go the easy route. Frozen is going to make this a little bit more liquidy. So do keep that in mind. I added one cup of heavy whipping cream, a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then I used half of that can of Rotel. I tried to drain the juice off a little bit. Not a big deal if you get some of the juice in there at all. And then I just saved the other half for another recipe in the week. Gave that a quick stir. Then I'm gonna go in with the seasoning. So in this dish, I keep it simple. I only added some salt. I do like to add some garlic powder, even though we added minced garlic. And then I do go in with paprika. And then after I stir it, I kind of let it cook a little bit. I decided that I was going to add a little bit of xanthan gum because it was, was a little bit watered down. I'm sure that was probably because of the frozen spinach. Again, not a big deal. There's ways you can thicken that up. So, I mean, again, if you don't want that, you can use fresh. But I always taste it so that way I can see if I need to add more seasonings. I needed to add more paprika. So it looked like I got heavy handed with the paprika, but I promise you it was delicious. That is how it turned out. You could put this over cauliflower rice. You could put this over broccoli. You could even put this over that spaghetti squash, or you could just throw it in a bowl and eat it exactly like that. It is so good. Rem remember, if you're not a shrimp lover, use chicken. It's all good. Next up, we're making dessert. And this dessert could be for any holiday. And I mean any holiday. Or why wait for the holidays? You could make it now. <laughs> so as you see, I took out two types of cocoa powder because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough. But I ended up having enough, so I didn't use the Dutch process one. But in that bowl, I put in there one and three-fourths cup blanched almond flour, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, three tablespoons of erythritol of your choice, whatever you want, a third cup of melted butter and one teaspoon of vanilla. Remember, you don't need to remember all this. I'm going to have the link to this recipe in the description box below. So don't think that you have to remember this. I know I'm going fast. Stir that up rather, rather well. And then I just took a springform pan that is perfect for cheesecakes. And then that is the base, obviously, to this cheesecake. This is the crust. So I'm just pressing this really, really well into that pan. And I did spray that pan very, very well because I didn't want it to stick. Then we're going to go in with the cheesecake filling. That unsweetened baker's chocolate I put in the microwave. You want to do it at 30 second increments until it's completely melted. And then in that bowl, I put in there 24 ounces of cream cheese that was at room temperature, one and a fourth cup of powdered erythritol, your choice, one teaspoon of vanilla, and then I just go in with my handy dandy mixer and I mix that rather well. Even though the cream cheese was softened, 
it was still like you're gonna you're gonna use some a little bit of arm muscle in there <laughs> and then once your chocolate is melted but yet not super hot you want it to be kind of warm not hot just dump that chocolate mixture right into your cream cheese mixture that you just made and go back in with your hand mixer and just mix away Try to get it as fluffy as you can. To be honest with you though, it really didn't get that fluffy. It was very, very thick and very, very dense. So um, I just thought I would throw that out there. I Mine personally didn't really get fluffy. I know a lot of times when you're making cheesecake, you're looking for like that fluffiness. This really did not get that. So I just wanted to throw that out there because you're like, what the heck's going on? It's not getting fluffy. <laughs> And then I just put that cheesecake mixture right over top of the crust and then I spread it out as good as I could. And then I actually press down on the cheesecake mixture to really hopefully get it um, as compact in there as I possibly could. And once I did that, again, I just tried to smooth out the top as much as I could. And once you are done with all of that, you are going to want to put that in the refrigerator. It says for at least two hours. Mine took a little bit longer than that. I mean, in two hours, it was starting to get cold, but I recommend longer than two hours in my own personal opinion. And then I just unclipped my springform pan, opened it up. That is what it looked like when it came out. I must tell you that this is really, really good. However, it is so dense and it is so rich, so chocolatey, like a little bit goes a long, long way. It says that it is 12 servings. I honestly feel like this could be even more than that because eating one piece towards the end of that one piece, you're like, oh boy, I am so done. It's delicious. It's so, so delicious. But like I said, it is so, so rich. So do keep that in All mind. All right. So that is a wrap on this week's meal prep. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got ideas and inspiration, motivation, all that good stuff during this video to meal prep for yourself and your family, or even just get ideas. If you're not a meal prepper or a batch cooker or anything like that, not a big deal. These are still perfect videos, ideas as to what to cook for dinner or lunch or breakfast or whatever, just so that way the keto diet doesn't become just this boring routine and you're eating the same thing over and over and over again. Some people don't mind that. I'm personally not that person. I like variety in my life and I've never been that person that can just eat the same thing over and over. So if you're like me, these are the perfect videos to get in there and really find new recipes to try out new things. But for now, I think that's all I have for you guys. I am praying for you, your family, and your country. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye. On my own, but I don't know why you hit the road, but you don't realize I'm on the back when you're around. I won't think twice when you're